Hi, I'm Jason, K4APR, and uh, recently I've gotten a lot of questions about the antenna GPS setup or array, whatever you want to call it, that I used for the Appalachian Trail Golden Packet event. And um, I figured in this video I could uh, show that a little bit better and uh, kind of explain how it all came together. So let's start at the base. This is uh, basically an Amazon Basics. Uh, tripod. I think I paid about maybe like 40 or 50 bucks for it. It's uh, it's really meant to be like a uh, speaker stand for like a DJ. So it's pretty stout. The uh, the nice tubular steel uh, base on it is is very stable, uh, especially when it was uh, outside on uh, non-level ground. It was it it held its own. I, I actually this is the second year using this. I used it last year as well. So if you watched my previous video. On the Appalachian Trail Golden Packet event from last year, you saw these in that video. I probably just didn't give as much detail as I was going to try to do in this video. Anyways, so this this is an Amazon Basics uh, tripod. It's basically a DJ speaker tripod. And then what I've done is is install a standard Diamond X50 NA antenna. I use the uh, standard bracketing kit that comes with the antenna. So this is basically a uh, aluminum tube that uses this uh, bracket set here that they, they include. And it's meant to clamp onto uh, some kind of circular mass, so, so it was perfect for this. And then the antenna itself just sits down in the top of this tube. And uh, actually it has two bolts that holds it in. I just got the one in because I'm just, I just kind of threw this thing together real quick for the video. Anyways, this is the, the NA model, which I prefer uh, N connectors, so that is why I have the NA model. I, I'm not sure what the actual model number is of the version with the SO239, but I don't care because the SO239 is substandard, in my opinion. Anyways, okay, so so you can see we've got the tripod with the antenna all the way up there, and this is fully extended. This isn't a super tall... Uh, uh, tripod. This I, I'm only five foot six, and this is just about at the top of my head. So uh, I should say the top of this uh, mast here. So this is um, almost six feet. It's cl it's close to it. it. It's good enough, especially when you're on a mountain top. Um, yeah, I mostly wanted to get this up high enough so I wouldn't poke my eyes on the radials. I can't say much for anyone that's taller than me, but anyways, it it, it served its purpose. I think the part that everyone's uh, or most people were really interested in is this right here. This is actually a uh, gym, uh, Trimble GPS antenna. The antenna head itself right there is the, is the Trimble antenna. Now it has a standard uh, pipe threading on it. So what I did was I took uh, some gray conduit pipe, plastic conduit pipe, threaded the top, and uh, that allowed me to have a really convenient way to uh, mount the antenna itself. And then these brackets here are actually 3D printed. I designed these up real quick in Tinkercad and printed a couple sets of these for the two antennas I was using. And uh, I'll try to show some more detail of that uh, here in the video. And you can see how those brackets work. But you can see they're very basic. They fit the pipe. Uh, just use a single screw in each. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get the trying to get the light right here so you can actually see it. Anyways, uh, there's a screw here and a screw there holding the pipe in. I kept the screws as short as possible because I don't want the end of the screw rubbing against the coax running up through the pipe. So kept that kept those screws real nice and short. Uh, and then uh, the brackets themselves, uh, they're just zip-tied. Just zip-tied to the pipe. Um, now, if this was a permanent installation, obviously this is not what I would use. Um, I certainly wouldn't use the zip ties for this. I'd uh, have some kind of metal band, but I probably also would not use these brackets for a permanent installation. Uh, at the very least, I would print them in uh, ABS or PETG or something that was a little more uh, withstanding of heat in the sun. This is just PLA. PLA is known for turning into taffy when it gets hot, so um, that would not be uh, recommended for a permanent outdoor installation. But for in this case, uh, this works great because it's just a temporary thing where it's only set up for oh four or five hours for the event and then it all gets torn down and uh, you know some side cutters cut the zip ties and you pull this thing all apart 
All right, uh, let's go look at the uh, the antenna, the uh, GPS antenna and coax a little bit closer. Okay, I've uh, moved out to my garage, so I can give you a little better look at the GPS antenna itself. So, like I said, this is a Trimble, Trimble brand antenna, and uh, I'll try to show that a little bit better with the light here. But you can see that it's a uh, threaded, it's an MPT thread, national pipe threading. So uh, I was able to get a standard MPT pipe die, threading die, and was able to thread this so that this would, would uh, you know, thread right on. Uh, it actually uses a TNC connector, if you can see that inside of the, the uh, housing there, inside the casting, that's a TNC. I personally really like TNCs. TNC is like a mini N connector, it's very low loss. And it's really ideal for uh, something like this at this frequency. GPS is 1.575 gigahertz, so you definitely want a very low loss connector uh, when you're operating at that frequency. So that's that's the antenna itself, and then like I said, it threads onto the pipe. And uh, yeah, it's just a standard pipe threading uh, die that I got off of Amazon. Um, I think I bought an entire kit of standard dies for maybe like 20 bucks. Um, now this stuff was not really, really easy to thread. It, it actually gets a little bit difficult as you get down. It is a uh, uh, tapered, so as the further it goes down the pipe, as you're as you're uh, screwing the die on, it does get tighter and tighter and a little bit harder to um, to thread. So uh, you can see I only really went as many threads as I really had to just hold this on. Um, so we'll look at these brackets a little bit closer. These are the 3D printed brackets. Uh, really, they're very very simple geometry. Um, you know, just a, a you know a loop just big enough, or a circle just big enough for the pipe, and uh, and then a very simple kind of uh, saddle bracket that I designed into it. And the nice thing about these brackets is you can print them uh, so they'll print like this, uh, you know, flat on the uh, printer bed. And other than the uh, hole for the screw and the uh, hole for the zip tie, oops, I'm sorry, let me get that in view so the hole for the zip tie um, those are the only two things that are a little bit of a challenge when printing in that orientation but the truth of the matter is the uh, the printer had no problem and I did not have to use any supports uh, when printing those so not just print these in a pair just two at a time uh, on the printer bed and uh, and then I mentioned uh, previously that I just use a very very short screw to uh, to attach them to the pipe like that so let's talk about the coax. The coax I was using for the event is, uh, this is RG8X. Now RG8, um, there's nothing wrong with RG8 at short distances and low power. 8X is a pretty good, it's a pretty good, uh, I prefer to use something like an LMR400 or even RG213 or 214 uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, a little more stout. But in this case, I wasn't going that far of a distance. So 8X was actually a good uh, in-between coax to use for this and as I mentioned before I'm an end connector fan so everything is converted to end connectors including the uh, the Kenwood itself I've replaced the SO239 with an actual chassis mount end connector so I stick with end as much as possible uses very little if not uh, no adapters if possible adapters just off uh, just in uh, insert loss and uh, and also our more failure point potential failure points. So, anyways, that's what I'm using there for the GPS antenna. This actually is the coax that comes with the antenna, which is kind of nice. Comes with the TNC already installed there, and it comes with a uh, an end connect or I'm sorry, an SMA connector, which all my GPSs use SMA. So this cable out of the package was 100% uh, usable for what I was doing. Uh, with what I'm using this for so no modifications needed now. This is um, This is fairly stiff. Uh, I think this might be LMR 240 possibly I'm looking at the uh, trying to look at the uh, um, Trying to see what uh, What it is uh, yeah, well, so it's a it's a it's a knockoff KSR 240, but it's essentially LMR 240 uh, it's just a, some generic version of LMR 240, but this is fairly low loss. Now, the thing to remember with stuff like that is this is a solid center conductor, so you definitely don't want to 
bend this a whole bunch of times and flex it all around because you will eventually cause that center conductor to uh, weaken and break in there. So um, this is not something I would use uh, where if I was having to unroll it and roll it up a lot of times, basically it gets unrolled and rolled once a year for this event. So I'm, I'm pretty much okay with that. Okay, so here you can see the uh, part that I designed in Tinkercad. I, I like to use Tinkercad. I'm not a 3D modeler, so I'm always looking for the easiest tools when it comes to things like this. And uh, this, this was the easiest tool to design this in. And uh, this, this is the uh, bracket in its uh, singular form. Of course, you've already seen it in the uh, previous video or the previous clip, but you can see now uh, in its 3D form, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, in the editor, or the um, 3D modeler here, and uh, this is a this is a file that I would uh, export to uh, to STL and uh, drop that into uh, my slicer program and print this on the 3D printer. So I will make this bracket available on my website. I'll I'll add a link in the description uh, to where I uh, put all my 3D print files. And I'll make this available to anyone who would like to download it and uh, and use it. Okay, thanks for watching this uh, not too long video, but I uh, I enjoy showing all the details of these various projects that I'm working on, especially when people start asking questions and are wondering what the uh, what what goes into putting this stuff together and maybe any of the custom stuff that I've designed for it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.